Alright everybody, we got some rough weather wind happening here and well, just got me a paint repair. See if y'all can see it. The pollen won that one. So we're going to go ahead and get this boat out the water and I'm going to show y'all how to fix this. All right. All right, everybody. So we got the boat out the water and now I'm going to show y'all how to fix this spot real quick. It's not going to take long. I'm going to start out with 100 grit and sand the area clean it and proceed with filling using the 3M vinyl luster filler. So here we go. Let's get it done. So now she's sanded and ready for some glazing. Next step is solvent cleaning with denatured alcohol and then I can get the glazing. So here we go. To show you all up close this is the repair area i got everything sanded and feathered out there's just lots of little pen holes or whatever you want to call it and there's a couple wallowed out dimples or divots whatever you want to say so that's why i'm going to use the vinyl luster filler and get it caught up to speed and then i'm going to prime this this afternoon so let's just get it done here we go we got the 3m premium filler and you just put like a golf ball size of filler down there Here's the cream hardener, and you don't put that much on there. That might have actually been a little too much, but it's still gonna kick just fine. And you just wanna mix it up real good until it's all one uniform color of blue. So I just wanted to show you all the filler I was using real quick and around about the amount of hardener that you put into it to mix it up, for those of you that don't know. So you only have a couple minutes working time with this stuff. It dries really quick and yeah. So the only reason I'm using this and not all fair right now is one, because it's a small repair area and two, I want to prime it today. So, you know, these types of fixes and repairs go fairly quickly if you know what you're doing. And yeah, so I just thought I'd note that. All right, she's ready to be put on the boat. And because this dries quick, we gotta move. So just to show y'all. Gonna put it on there kinda tight. give that a few minutes to dry sand it with 120 grit and get everything ready for primer all right go. she's ready to sand again 120 grit get it done right, everybody it's prepped and ready now it's time to mask off and get some primer on it I'm gonna use this 48 inch pre-tape masking film. This stuff comes in really handy when doing any type of spray work, repairs, or paint jobs. And you can pick this stuff up at Walmart. It's like six to seven bucks a roll. And uh, yeah, it's good to have. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this tape to mask off and get back with y'all when it's mixing up primer time. All right. primer. I have All Grips 545 two-part epoxy finishing primer here. This is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. You allow it to induct for 15 minutes and then you can add up to 25% reducer if you like. And of course I'm using my good old 3M AccuSpray setup. I really like this setup. It's easy to use. You can lay the paint down just fine with it and yeah. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and get the mixing up and I'll get with y'all when it's time to start spraying. All right. Everything's ready. I'm gonna solvent wipe real quick with denatured alcohol and get the spraying. So I'm going to go ahead and spray and I'm going to do multiple really light coats. I'm going to use a low pressure because I don't want overspray flying all over the boat. And yeah, it's going to go something like this. That's the first coat. I'm gonna do three coats and then it's done. So let's get it done, all right. All right, everybody. So yesterday I got this spot, you know, prepped and primed along with a few other spots along the hull. And uh, well, I'm just covering this one spot. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this 3M acrylic filler and I'm going to go around and look for little tiny pinholes and shallow imperfections and go ahead and glaze them out before I start with my finish sanding. So I'm going to go ahead and glaze out. Let's get it done. Alright, the acrylic filler's dry. Now it's time to sand. Now I'm going to do this with 320 grit. I have my interface pad. It makes for nice smooth sanding. And I'll hit the main perimeter with 320 and then I'll go around the perimeter with 600 and then 1500 and just kind of feather it out to make for a more easy repair. So I'm going to go ahead and sand and I'll get with y'all on the next bit. Right, 320 went smoothly, nothing jumped out at me. So now I'm going to take 600 grit and go around the outer perimeter and this, you know, you just see how I do it. All right. Okay. This is going pretty smoothly and pretty quickly. So now I'm jumping to 1500 grit and of course interface pad. It's important for this step. And all I'm going to do is go around the outer perimeter where I just sanded with 600 grit. So. Yeah, let's get it done. I'll show you guys real quick. This is what we're looking for. Uh, so this is all sanded really nice with 320 grit. And then I have this section here sanded with 600 grit and this section here sanded with 1500. This doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to be floating the paint on that. What I'll try to do after I do this paint repair is do more thinner and less paint to kind of help blend it in. It just makes makes easier for when it comes time for polishing. So just wanted to show you all that real quick. Now let's get it masked off and cleaned up, ready for paint. All right, all right. time to mask off now. When I mask off for doing repairs on a surface like this, this time when I run the mask and I'm gonna run it backwards so that when you pull the plastic back, it makes the tape roll over. And what that does is prevent a hard line, whether it's from the overspray just hitting it or if you accidentally take your, your pass all the way up to the tape. So this just gives it a nice, easier faded line rather than a hard crisp one. And what I mean is, okay, so here's the end of my 1500 grit. I'm not going to be painting into here, but I'm going to go just past that. I just want to show you all this real quick for those that don't know or those that might not have thought about this.
So I have my plastic there. Pull it out and pull it this way. And this makes your tape roll. It just, it gives it a nice soft line. It's really easy to polish out when you're finished. And so that's how I'm gonna be masking this off for the top coat. Here we go. Just wanted to show you all that. Denatured alcohol, clean, fresh rag. All right. All right, everybody. Tank mixing time. I got all grips, all craft 2000. This is a two to one mix ratio. Again, you allow this product to induct up to 15 minutes and you can thin it up to 25%. I'm only gonna thin it about 15% this go around because I really wanna build the paint up well because I'm going to have to do some buffing around the edges to get rid of the halo. As always, handy dandy 3M Matthew spray. I'm using the 1.4 cap on this and I don't know if I noted it when I was doing the priming yesterday but when I was priming I used the 2.0 cap. So anyhow, I'm going to get the mixing and I'll get with y'all when it's time to tack rag. All right. I wanted to note, I noted this when I was mixing up wet system, but when you're mixing up any product, whether it's primer, paint, epoxy, polyester, always periodically go around the edges and get the excess off and just make sure all the chemicals bind together. So I just wanted to jump in and note that real quick. All right. Time to tack rig. I've stated this in a previous video or two, but you know, when using these types of tack rags, you have to be extremely careful. I mean, you just rub really lightly. If you accidentally push into the surface with the rag, you got to back step, solvent clean, and start over because, well, you'll have a massive amount of fish eyes. So you just unfold your rag like this and drop it into a little poof ball in your hand and like i said lightly so you just let it glide across and it picks up all the lint and other debris that may have hit it and that's it she's ready for paint so here we go everybody time for the first coat i'm gonna go light slow and I'm only going to cover the gray right now, so it's, it's just going to go something like this. And that's it for the first coat. So let that tack up and i'll get with y'all on the next right, time for the second coat i know y'all are probably wondering how long i'm waiting between coats but you do the thumb test on the tape once no paint comes off on your finger you're ready for the next coat so here we go coat number three here we go all right fourth and final coat i'm going to show y'all this one as well so i'm just going to go a little slower make sure i keep everything wet and then we're done Pretty good to me. All right, next step is unmasking, and then we just wait, see what happens. All right, I'll show y'all all, all the various spots that I did before unmasking. I figured I'd take you for a walk down this side real quick. So here we go. 
spot number one spot number two that was the worst spot that i covered the entire process on and then spot number four so it's all done looks good to me and yeah next step is polishing out so i'll catch y'all then Everybody, moment of truth time to polish so just to show you there's the haze lines that i need to get rid of and well i'm gonna start out with 3000 grit and if that doesn't do it i'll jump back to 1500 grit but they're so light i believe 3000 is going to do the trick so i'm gonna go ahead and set up i'll show y'all and let's get it done all right 3000 grit Also, if you don't have an air powered buff or sander and you only have an electric DA, don't wet sand like this unless you want to get shocked. Just wanted to note that. <laughs> Okay, now I want to show you all this. Hopefully y'all can see it. When you're wet sanding and blending in, I'm not sure if y'all can see this slight line here. That is the halo. And well, I need to keep sanding because I need to make this all connect. Once you do that and you polish, halo's gone. Looks like it was never fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and sand a little bit more and I'm going to time lapse the rest of this just because the video is getting long enough already. So anyhow, here we go. Okay, so I got rid of the lines and now I'm ready to start polishing and I'm going to start out with the 3M finesse it just to see if this will remove the 3000 grit scratches. I try to stay as fine as possible, you know, just, just because coarser materials scratch and well, this is a dark colored surface. So you wanna, wanna go as light as possible. Also, I'm gonna be using a foam polishing pad, all right? When you're doing painted surfaces, you wanna use the foam pads and not the wool ones. Wool ones are for the gel coat, foam is for the paint. I do know some people like to use the, the wool ones on paint repairs and you know, that's okay if you're doing a light color, but on a dark color, use the foam pads. If not, you'll see scratches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little polishing and I'll bring y'all back to it when I'm finished. it did the trick i'm happy with it so now i'm gonna seal it off and i'm just gonna use this armada true wax you know this is pretty good stuff it's 100 percent carnauba wax and you know it's got polymer shield technology and uv blockers and all that stuff and it's good for paint so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and apply this by hand and then take it off and i'll do a walk around with y'all at all the repairs so y'all can see what it looks like all right that's a wrap it's done so go ahead and take y'all for a walk around real quick you know i only covered this one repair because i didn't see the need to to continually cover repeat processes i did the same thing on this repair that i did with all the other ones but yeah so anyhow here we go so right here was the one big repair and then up underneath this port was the other one and then well I can 
and here was that one that I just covered with y'all. And then there was another one right here. So it all blended in nice, no halos. And yeah, so that's a pretty productive couple days. Just to do the one repair I just showed y'all, uh, it took me about three hours start to finish and multiply that by four and boom that's how long it took me to do this process i had to buff out some other scratches and scuff marks some wet sanding was needed but ultimately i was able to get most of it out with compound and yeah so i really hope y'all enjoyed this episode i, I it's got to be helpful to some some of y'all that have a painted hall and well, this is one of the good things about Allcraft 2000. It's really easy to work with. You can make the repairs so that they're never seen again. And well, it's just a good product. So with that being said, hit that like button. Share with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And yeah, paint repair is finished. So this is going back in the water. Now I'm back on the fair cement boat. So the next video of that's getting ready to come up as well. And I'll see you all on the next one. All right.